This is the life, eh? The air, the landscape, the exercise. I could go on forever. How long have you been walking now? Ten minutes? Shall you ever sit down? <laughs> <laughs> this is our heritage, you know, Jackie, this landscape. It's timeless. If you let him in it now, Christopher Timothy could come round that corner in a baby Austin. Fresh from ramming his hands up the parts of a cow that actors cannot reach. Here, for the orange juice. No, save that. Come on. What we'll do, we'll go to a farm and get milk. Can you do that? Yeah. Haven't you read Swallows and Amazons? They couldn't set foot outside their tents without some love of an old farmer's wife thrusting gold top down their necks. <laughs> Might even get a bun. What sort of a bun? A bun. A glass of milk and a bun type bun. Haven't you read any of those books? Well, you know I'm a slow reader. I'm still learning halfway through the secret diary of Adrian Mole, age 12 and three quarters. I wouldn't bother. He's 27 now. He works in a bank in Melton Mowbray. Look, there's one. I bet you there's some apple-cheeked old biddy round the back there in a gingham apron, doling out the speckly eggs and the cottage cheese. Brilliant! Let's go and get some milk then. All lovely and frothy and fresh from the udder. You have to bring udders into it. <laughs> Milk, we're on a walking weekend and we passed your farm and we thought, how lovely, fresh milk straight from the udder. Okay. You thought you wanted some milk? Yeah. What, sort of to drink, did you mean? Yes, we thought this was a farmhouse. Oh, it is a farmhouse. It's called Dendale Farmhouse. So we thought there might be cows. Cows? You know the things with the four legs and big brown eyes? Go, <laughs> moo. Got you. I saw a documentary about them. It was amazing. Christopher Timothy was in it. It's all for me. So I just stop and get a drink of milk. Right. I'm on it. We don't have milk. I'm sorry. That's OK. I could maybe find some Perrier. No, honestly, it doesn't matter. Really. Is there a problem, sweetie? No, it's all right. These people really wanted some milk, Jamie. The stuff in the garden, yeah? Yeah. Do we have any? Not really. Can we get some faxed? <laughs> Idea of yours to come camping. Yeah. Pure hormones. Ozone. What hormone then? Hormones. You know what they are. What are they? Well, they're women's things. You don't notice you've got them till you run out of them. Like split peas? Yeah, but if you run out of split peas, you don't go red and grow a moustache. Well, I wouldn't bank on it. <laughs> you heard of hormone replacement therapy? No. No, neither have I. <laughs> you know what I fancy now? What? That chocolate. What chocolate? That huge great bar in your rucksack. Have you got it? I haven't exactly got all of it. Why, have you been eating it? How much is there left? Well, just the paper. You eat <laughs> that huge bar of very expensive chocolate that I bought. When did you eat it? I never saw you putting anything in your mouth. How did you have it as a suppository? <laughs> you said you were having a wee. I thought you were a suspiciously long time. I assumed it was some latent bladder problem brought on by the unaccustomed exercise. It never crossed my mind you're crouched in the grass with your trousers around your ankles, practically gobbling fruit and nuts. I only meant to have one square. One square foot. I have a problem with chocolate. So do I now. I want someone I can't have any. <laughs> do you want to sing The Happy Wanderer? No, I want to sing How Much Is That Piggy With The Rucksack? <laughs> Am I limping? Muscle fatigue brought on by sugar deficiency, I would imagine. Pity there's no such thing as sugar replacement therapy. There is. It's called chocolate. <laughs> I'm getting a blister. It's a shame you didn't soak your feet in a bowl of surgical spirit, as I think I suggested earlier. Have you tried buying enough surgical spirit to fill a bowl? The woman in boots thought I was a wino having a cocktail party. <laughs> I had to buy a toilet roll holder just to prove I wasn't homeless. Well, I'm going for another wee, if you'll excuse me. Ah, ah, ah. I'll mind this. I don't want you licking the dehydrated pasta whirls. I need something out of it. Use a dock leaf. I want to blow my nose. Use two. One for each nostril. <laughs> Well, I think we're here. But where are the three little trees? Well, they're not real trees, they're symbolic. Like Pinta. Look, we came up a little track like that, didn't we? Mm -hmm. And the river was there, and that little hilly thing. Mm -hmm. So I think we're here, and we want to go north. Which way's north? Ah, I tell you. You look at the sun. Yes. Look at the time. Yes. Then you work out where north is. I see. So what's the time? Yes. What is the time? The time now? No, the time Jesus first made a fitted wardrobe. What time is it? <laughs> I told you my watch was broken. I phoned you up. I said, have you got a watch? And you said, yes, I have, didn't you? Yes. Oh, where is it? In my cardigan pocket. Where's your cardigan? In my car. <laughs> well, we can't find this campsite, Jackie, and I die of exposure trying to fetch help. You will have to write to Mrs. Margaret Thatcher and explain how it was the country came to lose a well-loved and irreplaceable entertainer. I hope you understand that. Yes, I do. <laughs> right. Come on. I think this way is north. 
I'm sure you're right. In fact, it feels a little bit cold already, don't you think? <laughs> of course, we probably wouldn't have liked that campsite if we had found it. Oh, no, this is much more of an adventure. Just like your book. What was it? Seagulls and Cannibals. Swallows and Amazons. Swallows and Amazons, bravo! What's it about? Well, they all go off in a boat, right? John and Susan and Roger and Titty. Roger and who? Roger and Titty. And this is a children's book? Yeah. <laughs> uh, right, is that all the bits? Yep. Right. You put the tent up, I'll get the water. Where's the folding buckety thing? I don't know how it goes up. No, but they're all basically the same, aren't they? You've been camping enough times. I've never been camping. That's why this is such a thrill. What do you mean you've never been camping? I haven't ever been, sorry. Jacqueline Thompson, when I met your mother, did she or did she not say that as an adolescent you were always intense? Intense? <laughs> I was always intense. <laughs> Your mother wants elocution lessons. I'm going to phone you. Then I shall send her an offensive bouquet. Well, I thought you knew all about this. You know all the words to the Happy Wanderer. I know all the words to climb every mountain, but I'm not a mother superior. <laughs> I'll read out the instructions, and you join the bits together. Right. Take tube A and apply to bracket D with flange channel outermost. Tube A. Tube A. <laughs> right, let's start. Take tube A and apply to bracket D with flange channel outermost. Outermost, yes, I've done that. Figure three, repeat with tubes B, F and J. Yeah. Figure four, then quasi-tighten socket cap E until semi-protruding locking hinge K is engaged. Yes, I've done all that. Yes, but I think that's where we went wrong before, Vic. Is your socket cap quasi-tightened? Yes. And is your semi-protruding locking hinge engaged? Yes, I think so. Yeah, but check that it is engaged, Vic. What do you want me to do? Ask to see its engagement ring? It clicks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Gather up canvas panel M, taking care that stitched gully phrases braided thonging C, H and W, otherwise wax-proofing flap O will be rendered inoperable. Okay? What do you mean, okay? Gather up canvas panel M. Which is it? Which what? Which is canvas panel M? The one with the stitched gully, obviously. They've all got a stitched gully, you pinhead. That's what you stick the rods up. How do you think the sides stay together? Hormones? Gather <laughs> up canvas panel M. I don't know which one it is! Stupid thing. <laughs> I don't think these are bits of tent, anyway. I think there's been some hideous mix up at the factory, and these are actually the individual sections of some compulsive eater's pinafore dress. <laughs> There'll be some poor woman in a back bedroom in Henley and Arden sobbing, trying to squeeze her buttocks into a wax proofing flap. <laughs> oh, come on, this is ridiculous. We're both intelligent people. With a little bit of serious thought, we should have the problem solved in no time. That's what Neville Chamberlain said to Hitler. <laughs> I keep telling you, I haven't read Swallows and Amazons. Take <laughs> cheaper and apply your bracket D. <laughs> Take tube A and apply to bracket D. Reading it out slower does not make it any easier to do. I'm sorry, you read it out. Then. It doesn't matter who reads it out. You could rewrite it as a duet for Cindy Lauper and Placido Domingo. We wouldn't be any nearer putting up the stupid thing. <laughs> I can't believe you dragged me all the way out here without a single smidgen of technical expertise. What about you? Keen as mustard in the car. Now it turns out you've never done anything more adventurous than step on an escalator in soft-soled shoes. <laughs> what did you do in your summer holidays, for heaven's sake? Why weren't you a guide? Why didn't you go camping? I was in the youth orchestra on the oboe. Well, that fits together, doesn't it? Good heavens, what is a tent when you think about it? It's only four big oboes and an evening dress. <laughs> <laughs> a man! You look like he knows about tents. He's got shorts on. That's good. Have they got a semi-protruding locking hinge on them? <laughs> Hello! Oh. Hello! Oh, isn't it glorious? Oh, you can practically <laughs> smell those hormones. <laughs> See? Oh, are you drinking it in? The scenery, are you? We are. Are we, Daddy? Drink it in, the scenery. Plenty of it. <laughs> <laughs> he's joking. He is, aren't you? Oh, he's dry as daddy, aren't you? He's like a dry white wine. Oh, 